Hello, I'm Associate Professor Peter Hudson, the Director of the Centre for Palliative Care, Education and Research at St Vincent's Hospital and the University of Melbourne. I'm delighted to be introducing this educational resource which focuses on helping healthcare professionals prepare family carers for the role of supporting a family member who requires palliative care. The World Health Organisation and the standards of palliative care provision in numerous countries promote the importance of assessing and responding to family care needs. We operate in a healthcare environment where evidence-based practice is a requirement. The Family Carer Group Education Program outlined in this resource has been comprehensively evaluated. The benefits of the program have been presented at local and international conferences and the findings published in international journals. After attending the program, family carers have reported that they feel more competent, more prepared, they have less unmet needs and are able to acknowledge positive aspects associated with the role. I sincerely hope that this evidence-based resource helps you to better support family carers. palliative care nurse asked me if I would be involved in a group um, to inform carers on what, what was available to them to support them through their period of caring, even though I couldn't imagine where I was going to find the time. But in fact, it was a good time to get away and be, I found, to be with other carers was a very good situation. The Family Carer Education Program consists of three sessions held one week apart. Each session is for approximately two hours and the ideal is to have between three and eight caregivers at each session. The aim of the session is to provide information and resources to the carers. So the major challenge really is to, to get carers to come in to begin with. Um, often they're they have no time or they just really feel that they need to be with the person they're looking after. So, um, you know, it might even be a matter of helping organise some respite through volunteers or, um, you know, whatever other respite resources you've got available. For me to leave my wife at home here and go to that seminar, it had to be a situation where someone was here to look after her and I would always carry my mobile and she knew that she only had to phone me and uh, irrespective of where I was, what I was doing, um, it would be paramount for me to come back uh, because um, I always wanted to be with her. Ways of recruiting that we would recommend are a phone contact to the primary carer or the next of kin of all new patients admitted to your service telling them about the program and inviting them to attend the next program. Alternately, you might like to consider including a flyer with information packs to all primary carers, or you might like to promote the program being conducted on a regular basis. Say, for example, you might like to run it on the first Monday of each month and carers can come to the next program that's being conducted. Thanks for your presence here today. I'm aware that this can be a really difficult time to get away, so I do appreciate that, that you've made it here. These next three weeks are for you, about you. What they aim to do is to support you in your caring role, to provide you with a little bit more information and support to assist you through this time. And also, really importantly, to give you the opportunity to, to be with others who are in a similar situation. To run a family caregiver education program, you need to have access to a room that comfortably seats eight to 10 people. A facilitator who's skilled in group work and education is vital to the success of the program. 
access to equipment including a laptop and projector to display the PowerPoint slides. Afternoon tea or morning tea needs to be organised. Brochures relevant to the service are vital and also providing the participants with copies of the PowerPoint slides is a good reference. Make sure you've got tissues available. I'm aware that you may all be in very different situations in relation to how unwell the person that you're caring for is and that some of the things that we're going to discuss may be difficult to hear and may be quite confronting. So I just encourage you if you can to to listen to what's said, to, to take on board what's relevant to you at the moment and just to put away the rest for when you need it. A PowerPoint presentation is provided to assist you. It consists of 37 slides. The contents of session one and two are interchangeable, but session three is best kept separate. So, in front of you you have a little pack that um, contains a booklet supporting someone who, who needs palliative care and that's very much what these sessions are built around. It's a really useful resource for you. You'll also find a copy of the slideshow. So we are going to have a few of the slides to start with but other than that just kind of follow it as you would like to on the sheet there. There's also a list of the services that we're going to talk about today because today's session is a focus on the services and supports that are available to you as carers and also a focus on how it is for you, how you're going, how you're finding things. So just some ground rules so that everyone can feel as comfortable as possible in this setting. And I guess really importantly to think about confidentiality and the importance of not being judgmental. We all bring our own experiences to this. No one necessarily chooses to be in this role and so your experiences may be quite different. Please feel really comfortable to be involved in the discussion or not, whatever sits for you. The sessions will start on time, but I'm aware that things change very quickly and if you're running late, don't feel at all stressed about that, that's absolutely fine. If you've got the time to give me a call, great, but otherwise just uh, come when you can. Slides 6 to 14 cover a range of issues related to being a carer. It's my experience that carers express a range of emotions at this time, but sometimes positive and sometimes negative. There's a huge number of challenges that, that I guess you confront and people sometimes talk about not knowing what to expect, wondering if they actually have the physical resources, if they're going to be able to manage, how long is it going to go on? Mm. I'm just wondering how it's going for you guys. Well it can be quite stressful for people. Um, you know, often they're, they're thrown into this role without any kind of uh, medical background. Suddenly they're looking after someone needing medical care, um, you know, having to give them medication and sometimes personal care, which is really kind of confronting for a lot of people. I really didn't anticipate that her condition would be so difficult to look after and that it would go on and on. And look, there's, there's no time for me and, and it's becoming harder to organise time with the family and the grandkids uh, really get quite frightened by her at times. And I, and I feel like I'm all alone in it. The whole experience of caring can feel quite isolating. Um, people um, can often, their, their, their whole focus is on looking after this person. They haven't got all these supports around them. So when they, when they meet people in the same position, they can actually, um, it's actually a great support and comfort for them to know that other people are actually experiencing those things. And um, I suppose exchanging ways that they deal with um, the difficulties in caring. It is really important to expand on slide 10, which is about the resources available and put together your own list of services and resources available in your area. You know, carers can come along and hear about the sorts of services that are on offer. I mean, often information can be given to you at various times, but um, you know, it's important to reinforce the fact that carers can get respite, they've got um, you know, support around them through um, allied health services, um, and the nurses there and what they're there for. 
So perhaps in terms of considering some practical supports for you, this might be a really good time to introduce Jenny, who's one of our social workers. Jenny is going to talk about some respite options that are available to you, both within the home and as an inpatient, and also just to kind of inform you about what resources and supports that the social worker can help you with. Just your normal routine, things like going shopping or going out and having a break can be very difficult and often requires a lot of organisation and respite just to, work, just to do the normal things that you used to be able to do. Don't forget to take a break about halfway through the session for refreshments and encourage conversation between the carers and the healthcare professionals. Well, interestingly enough, I suppose one of the most helpful parts of the sessions were the break times because people really got to um, talk to each other about their own experiences and um, offer that informal support. Welcome back everyone, it's good to see you again. Session 2 is covered by slides 15 to 26 and focuses on two main topics. The first is about practical ways for the carer to care for their relative and the second encourages discussion about ways to take care of themselves. You realise that you are the main support for the person who was ill and without that support they didn't have very much to hang on to. So you had to then realise that not only were you caring for the person, that you also had to care for yourself. Before we talk about today's topics, just wondering if there's anything that's come up for you from last week, anything, any questions you had, anything you wanted to talk about in relation to what we discussed last week? My mother, she's feeling very nauseated. Mm -hmm. Um, she, I cook her traditional Vietnamese food, but she just can't take in, and I don't know what else I can do. Sure. And it's really difficult, isn't it, because we put such a lot of energy and love into preparing food for someone, and when they can't manage it, it's really difficult. So this is a good In your role of, as facilitator, you, you know, it's important that um, any questions that come up in the sessions, that they're, they're actually answered, so there's a bit of continuity going through it, so people who have particular questions and um, concerns that they're answered in the next session and that you actually um, have the information to give people about um, those particular issues. For slide 18, you may want to invite a range of professionals to talk about the different points. As you know, today we're going to be talking about some common kind of symptoms, some concerns that you might have. So the first person that's going to speak to that is one of our doctors. So I'm going to go and bring him in shortly. Just wondering if you've thought of any questions that you might like to ask him? Oh yes, I'm very concerned about medication so I'm really anxious to ask about that. Okay. It just, it's not working as well as okay. it used to. Perhaps invite a palliative care nurse to talk about hygiene, nutrition and equipment. If you have an occupational therapist or dietitian, you may also like to invite them in to talk about their relevant areas. The one thing that stands out that I did learn uh, was that the hospitals provide a lot of equipment that you can use temporarily in your home. I met the wonderful um, occupational therapist. They had all that equipment there and they said, oh, this is all free. You just have to sing out and we'll deliver it. And um, it enabled Nick to get up much easier. I'm aware that you're all caring for the person that you love at home at the moment and most certainly there are a lot of supports and resources and additional help that can come in to help you through that time but sometimes through no one's fault or for a variety of reasons that isn't always possible and I'm just wondering if you've thought about what your preferred place of care would be, where you would like the person that, that you um, are looking after to be, is that something that you've had a discussion about or given any consideration to? I, I really want to have Peter at home. I know this is what he wants mm -hmm. and I want it too. Um, I just imagine that 
I'll probably need more physical help. Okay. And you've you've thought about what you what you may need around that time, and oh, yes. certainly um, the palliative care service will be able to support. That'd be wonderful. Yes, thank you. Okay, Marjorie, thank you for that. Mm. Well, we do have um, friends who do help out while I'm at work, so they come and check up on her. Um, but and I know it's not enough with me trying to juggle work and everything. Um, the nurse, the care nurse, did say. Um, about admission into the, but would she be able to come home at all? She may well be able to come home. Okay. That certainly would never be a decision that was made without your consideration and your mum's wishes. It got to the point where I could barely lift him and uh, so I, I, I yelled out for help then. In the end, this young lady said to, sounding to Nick that completely um, changed his mind about staying here and he said to me, I can't go on like this anymore because you can't lift me. But it was this young lady who'd convinced him that if he truly loved me, he would go to hospital just for an interim period. It was always positive, just for that interim period and to give Patricia a rest because she's no good to you when she's feeling frazzled and and she needs to eat a bit and have just have quiet time. Slides 21 to 24 on caring for yourself can either be presented by the facilitator or by a social worker, counsellor or pastoral care worker. Because we know that, that the focus is very much on the person that you're looking after. So sometimes your needs can get lost in the middle of that. I'm going to hand over to Sue who's one of our counsellors. Um, thanks Michelle, it's lovely to be here with you today. Um, now my role I guess is, 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 as I see it, to maybe facilitate having a conversation with each of you with each other because I think you know a lot more about being a carer than I would ever know and the bits that I do know I've learnt from other people like yourselves in the role. Uh, I suppose it's, it's important to brief the speakers on the sorts of information that you'd like them to cover. Um, particularly if people have individual kind of concerns, you could talk to the speaker about that before so they could prepare for that and have a little bit to say. Um, and also the amount of time that they've got because it's important to keep to the time structures. You had to make sure that you ate properly, um, that you still did the things that you enjoyed. Um, whether you got out in the garden and did the things that you wanted to do that you would normally do with your partner and enjoy those things that you still wanted to do. Slides 25 to 26 provide a summary of the session and an opportunity to introduce session three. It is also important to check with people to see if they are concerned or anxious about attending session three. The last day of the seminar was basically journey's end was discussed. It's the most confronting situation that anybody is going to be faced with, whether it be a, a young child or, a, or your grandmother. One thing is to know that we're here for a purpose in life and it's another thing not to know when God says, come with me. <sighs> so Pat's sitting here at the moment. Pat's one of the nurses here in the community. She's got loads and loads of experience and she's going to take us through this session. We're going to look at what to expect, what you might see as death approaches. Maybe consider how that might make you feel. What, what you need to do when someone dies and what you don't need to do. And also to consider some of the supports that will be there for you at that time and ongoing. Mm. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you all. And I, I can sort of imagine how difficult this day might have been for you all of the three sessions that were planned. This is often the 
probably the hardest to deal with. You know, a lot of people have, have um, reservations in talking about it with their loved ones as well. I mean, there's, um, you know, they're, they're afraid of what to say and how to say it and how to broach it, you know, with the people around them. And this just gives an opportunity to talk about it openly. Now, when you get towards the very end stage of life, there's often changes in that and it can be um, breaks in the breathing. So you might get it a little bit rapid, sort of a and then stops. Does, does they, are they in pain? No, 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 this is not pain. This is just, this is just a natural sort of occurrence here. Yeah, there's no pain involved in this. It's just the body shutting down. Who do we actually call when it happens? Right, so um, if you think that, you know, whoever you're looking after has actually died, um, you don't have to rush and do anything because at this point, just allow yourself a few minutes to just be there, if, even if you're by yourself. The emotion that, that is within yourself is very hard to control. Um, I noticed with um, the lady who was at the seminar whose husband was quite ill also was very emotional um, and um, the tissue box uh, was quite handy for both of us. Right Fong, I see this is really difficult for you. Would you like to take a little bit of time out or just keep going? Just, keep just to keep on going, yeah, yeah it is hard. And look, the big thing to remember, you are not on your own in this, okay? There's a whole team of people who are there for you. One of the most helpful parts of the sessions were the break times because people really got to um, talk to each other about their own experiences and um, offer informal support. In some of the feedback we've been given, that was one of the most helpful things I think that people kind of noted down. I'd like to introduce Lucy to you. Lucy is one of the bereavement counsellors here at our service. So, thanks, Lucy.